up these webinars in an attempt to just better educate people on the features that are available, some of the newer things that we have um, kind of enabled and, and created and uh, built into the software, and just make sure that people are getting the most value out of the licenses that they do have. Uh, so that's kind of the point of, of uh, today's call. And um, what I would suggest everyone does or what everyone should do is um, if you do have any questions, certainly type them into the interface. Um, the GoToWebinar interface, and then at the end, I can go through those questions and answer them one by one. Um, and it can be related to what we're talking about, or even if it's kind of an offshoot, I'm happy to, to answer any specific questions. Um, so yeah, so again, so let's get started. I think there was a, an itinerary that went out to everybody as far as what we were going to be covering today. Um, so I'll just review that real quick. It's going to be continuous screenshots, user behavior reporting, alert word lists and email notifications, inactive time, and the new mobile interface. Uh, so, yeah, so let's get started. So the first one, continuous screenshots. So as everybody knows, with employee monitoring, you have screenshots available. In the past, you had the ability to set up screenshots based off of a specific program or website. So whenever somebody opens, say, uh, Microsoft Excel or whenever somebody opens Facebook, you can have it start to trigger a screenshot every, say, five seconds for a certain amount of time. So you set the interval and the duration. So you say, whenever somebody opens up Facebook, I want it to take a screenshot every five seconds for 30 minutes or for two hours. And it will take those screenshots. That's a good pointed way of looking at really what's on their screen and what are they actually doing in this either program or website. For some people, uh, in some businesses, it's obviously different for everybody, but they really want to see what people are doing at any time, and that's all throughout the day. Whenever they're logged in, they literally just want to see what's on the workstation. We now have that capability and, and have released it, and it's called Continuous Screenshots. Um, to set it up, it's under Settings, Recording, and Blocking. Uh, the basic difference being that, again, with the way smart camera screenshots were triggered was by a program or a website. This is just automatically going to be taking screenshots of whatever is on that workstation at an interval that you choose. So every five seconds, a screenshot will be taken no matter what they're doing, whenever they're logged into that computer. Obviously, when the computer is locked or turned off, it's not going to be taking screenshots. So it's only when the user is logged into the computer. Uh, but turn it on, basically, again, recording and blocking. This is where your groups are created. And then this is a group-based setting so that you can have this group have continuous screenshots, whereas other groups of people maybe don't have that option. Uh, but you know, you'd probably want to turn smart camera screenshots off for this group if you're going to turn continuous screenshots on. And then all you have to do is choose the interval of time. This is based on seconds, so obviously you can do five seconds, up to one minute, up to six minutes. And then the thing with all of those screenshots that you're capturing, ultimately you can have them um, kind of exported out to you and you can save those you know, on a weekly basis, which is pretty straightforward. If you just go to the dashboard exports page and just choose screenshots and have them sent to you, say, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, um, and then just save those files, um, then over time, I guess technically you could save every screenshot you've ever captured you'd be able to keep if you, if you ever had to look back on them. Uh, so yeah, so that's what uh, that is. So the next one was user behavior reporting. Uh, user behavior reporting is a kind of a newer space in the in the employee monitoring uh, industry in general, and it's the idea is that you know letting people kind of better understand how their office functions on a regular basis. What are the averages um, that that takes place on any given day in that office for that business? Obviously, it's going to be different for every type of company or type of office depending on how many people you have what kind of job are they doing um, you know what are they what are they supposed to be spending time on versus not spending time on but the point is it's counting how many times things happen so for different data points like say keystrokes well how many keystrokes on average is somebody pressing in that office um, per day. Well, it turns out the average is going to stack all of your users top down. It'll say the average for the office is 500. You know, your number one person typed, uh, you know, 2,000 uh, keystrokes, whereas um, John only typed 50 keystrokes. Well, does that mean that John wasn't doing his job? Maybe. It's really going to be up to you to look into that. The point of it is that it's going to point out anomalies or let you see whenever somebody's not kind of fitting into the average. 
other categories that are useful would be number of websites visited, number of webmails sent. So if the average for the office for a webmail, uh, webmails that are sent if you use Outlook, of course, and assuming that webmail is going to be personal email, um, the number of uh, webmails, let's say the average for the office is two, and you have 10 people, and the average is two, but there's one person that sent 20. I probably want to know why he's sending so many webmails, because there's a good chance that he's, you know, either just completely wasting time, or, you know, perhaps he's reaching out to, um, you know, a competitor of some kind, um, or a recruiter and looking for work. Uh, could be any of the above. Uh, but just to give you an idea of what that report looks like, uh, basically it's just an Excel spreadsheet, and you choose the different data points or features that you're looking at. So emails that contain an alert word. You can see the average for the office is six. That's that's okay, but you know why does John have twice the average? Might want to look into that. And then you would go into that data and say, let's look at these emails that he's sending. Are they malicious in some way? Total emails sent or received, average, top, bottom, everyone in between. Webmails, as I said before. IMs and chats, keystrokes. Again, you can choose any of the recorded data functions. So whatever is useful to you. Maybe if you have employee monitoring and you've added on the enterprise feature or the file tracking feature, then you have these file tracking events available too. So um, you know, did somebody do something on Dropbox? Well, the average for the office is six, but John did twice that number. What, you know, what's he doing on Dropbox? Um, so yeah, so that's the idea there. So to build that report, um, you can go to Dashboard and then click on Reports. You're going to add a report. It's a custom report. And then you can see this fifth option is a daily user behavior report, which is the one we were just looking at. You'd name the report. You then basically choose which categories you're interested in seeing on that report. So maybe a bunch of that stuff is not relevant, but maybe a couple of them are. So I want to see you know, how many blocked websites are people going to. The average for the office is maybe only one per person per day. This is a daily look back, so it's looking at the day before. So maybe the average of the office is one. Why is this one person going to 20 or 30 blocked websites a day? Um, I might want to know what those are. So that's what this allows you to do. It's, it's running in the background. It's drawing this information and presenting it to you in a report that you get via email. You don't even have to log in to, to get that information. And so it's telling you, hey, there's somebody that's you know potentially standing out from the norm um, that's really the value of the software in my mind is when it's running uh, and you're doing your own job and it's giving you this information on a regular basis and allows you to say, hey, is this something I need to be concerned about or not? And it's just something that you, you would have no other way of knowing if the software wasn't presenting that data to you. Um, so you can see the different types, emails as I sent with webmail, maybe it's Outlook with an attachment, maybe um, if you have the, again, enterprise add-on, webmail attachments is part of that enterprise feature. Enterprise is not an expensive increase to do so, so if anybody has employee monitoring, just know to add the enterprise feature. If you don't already have it, it's only a 10% increase in license cost. Um, and you don't have to do it for everyone, you can just do it for the people you want. Um, so not an expensive, and it does give you a lot of features. It's, you know, did somebody add something to USB? Did somebody do something on Dropbox? Did somebody send a webmail with an attachment? the complete logon history, as well as a look anywhere on the computer or on a network file drive. You just have to specify the file path and you say, hey, in this folder, I want to see if somebody adds, deletes, renames, or modifies a file, and it will tell you if that happened. It's not stopping it from happening, but it is telling you that it did happen, which is usually, to be honest, more important than anything else, is knowing that these things are happening. Um, so yeah, so you see all the different categories you have. If you chose a few, uh, then you're going to choose who it's covering. Maybe it's covering everybody. Maybe it's just one group of people. Maybe it's just one person. Uh, how often do you want to receive it? This is a daily report. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you would add your email address here. Just know you can have multiple recipients of these uh, reports by just adding more. And then you finish and it's all set. So yeah, so that's how you build that report. Um, so let's see, next we were going to talk about alert word lists and email notifications. So 
alert word lists much like this idea of a behavior report that's coming to you on an automated basis, again, is the value of the software in my mind when it's running in the background, looking for things that you want it to look for and telling you when these things happen. So an alert word list would be you build a list of words that you want to know if somebody types on their computer. Maybe it's a competitor's name. Maybe it's an industry-based term. Maybe it is a um, job search term that proves that they're looking for work, such as recruiter, you know, resume, indeed.com, salary, monster, career builder, any of those things. Then if they type that word on their computer, um, you can actually have it, one, take a screenshot uh, when that happens, or even notify you by email when that happens. So uh, first of all, to set up those alert words, you would go to settings, alert words. Um, and the important thing to know is that we actually have a couple pre-built lists that I can supply to you. Uh, the most commonly asked for ones that we that I would say I provide to, to the most number of customers are the bad words list or swear words and then also a job search list. Um, and you can, instead of having to add every word individually, you can just upload the CSV file right into the software and it will have that entire list already pre-populated. If you guys want that, let me know. Um, you can reach out to me by phone or email and I can give you that information. I'll, I'll give my contact information at the end just to make sure everybody has it. Um, but yeah, I can provide that and it's very easy to upload. So just to get an idea of how you build that list on your own, if you wanted to, first you add the category, you name the category, then the categories list some of the categories here. You would then hover over that category um, to see on the right which words go with that category. I'm trying to find one that has some words here. Let's see, these are obviously just examples, but um, save for top secret. Okay, so here are your words. So if I wanted to add a word to that, now that I'm hovered over that category, I can add a word by just typing in the word, or I can use regular expressions, so something that might be a credit card number or a social security number, something that might be a zip code. It's basically looking for patterns of numbers or letters. Um, or you can upload a pre-built list and just click upload to file, choose the file, it's gonna browse your computer, pull up the file that you saved that I would have sent to you or that you've already built yourself and uh, just upload it right into that group. After you've built the list, if you come down to notifications, you can get notified when somebody types that word, um, you know, which, which is valuable because um, you might want to know, you know, hey, is somebody looking for work? I might want to know about that right away. So you go settings, notifications, add, um, alert word category. So that would be the time when somebody has, you know, basically um, typed one of those words somewhere and you want to know about it. So we're going to call this alert word notification. Maybe we're using the same one that we looked at before which was, I think, financial. And again, you can do these on a regular basis, like a weekly or daily, but I think the biggest value for, at least for alert words, is to get it immediately. Um, because, you know, obviously if you're receiving a lot of notifications and it turns out one of the words is just something that people are using on a day-to-day -day basis, I would then just change the, the list of words so that it's a little bit more specific and relevant. Um, but if you do immediate, if you can get it down to words that actually matter, it's good to know that when that happens so that you know you can take action right away if you need to. Um, but of course, you can choose if you wanted a scheduled basis there as well. Again, again, same thing. Is it covering everybody, one group, or just one person? You'd add your email address, click Add, Next, and then you'd be all set. Um, just note as well that you can also capture a screenshot when somebody types or even views the, one of those words on the screen. If you go to settings, recording and blocking, which is again where you're basically choosing what is and isn't turned on or off. Um, so you go to the group setting down to alert word screenshots, the last option there. You're either going to have it off or on. And then if you turn it on, this is where you click the settings next to it. And you're going to choose, well, what words do I care about or what categories of words do I care about? So if it's typed, it's almost always going to be accurate, right? If they type that word, it means it's on their screen. They're obviously, something relates to that word, and, and that's good to know about and be able to even print out a screenshot and show it to somebody if you had to. The fact that you have typed or viewed, viewed obviously is going to be even one step further. So if it's resume, 
or monster.com, and maybe somebody has already been to monster.com and they only type MO in the search bar and it pulls up monster.com. Well, that wouldn't pull up an alert word by type because they didn't type the entire word monster. They only typed MO. Well, if you have it as viewed, even if it just is viewed somewhere on that web page or program, it will capture a screenshot as well. So you can do both. The one thing to note is that sometimes viewed will pull up some false positives in the sense that that word might be embedded in the script somewhere of the page. It might be at the bottom of a web page, so it's not even actually on the part of the workstation that you have a screenshot of, if that makes sense. Um, so it maybe gives you a little bit more of a blanket of coverage, but also um, pulls down the accuracy. I think sometimes with a typed, it's almost, I would say every time, it's really going to be something that's relevant because they, they typed the word, so it had to come from them. Anyway, that's how you build that. Um, so yeah, so the next one we talked, to, we we're going to talk about is inactive time. One thing the software does, and I think that's something that's kind of growing in relevance and, and what people want to see is um, when are people at their computer? Um, and you know, not only are they not logged in and walking away, you know, you want to make sure that they're, they're not logged in and walking away and leaving the computer up and running. You want to know if they're actually engaging with the computer. Obviously, for a growing remote population, uh, as we all see people becoming more remote in general, um, this will allow you to say, well, not only are they logged in, but when are they actually active on the computer? When are they doing things such as opening programs, opening websites, pressing keystrokes, engaging in IMs, sending emails, all of those things. So if you go to the top of your dashboard and then click the first option or reporting option, which is called activity, what you'll see is um, basically a heat map of when people, are, again, are at their computer producing any level of activity. Um, because it shows all activity, that means if they're doing any of those things, keystrokes, programs, emails, websites, anything, it will show up as one of these green markers. And the value um, behind, uh, in my mind, behind these markers is not so much what they're doing, it's are they doing anything, period. So what it will tell you is when did they log into their computer, because you can see when their day starts. When did they leave in the middle of the day if there was a lunch break or any kind of a break? Because that's represented by this blank spot where for 15 minutes or more, nothing happened, not one piece of activity. And when did they leave at the end of the day? If this was an active account, just note as well, this would be many shades of green. As you can see here, this is kind of a legend. Um, the more number of items or actions that take place, the darker green the shade will be. And on regular accounts, which I've seen hundreds of times, uh, you do see a pretty good vary of variation of colors here that, that kind of tells you, well, when are they most busy? When are they doing the most things? Um, but I think the value here is when do they start the day? Did they start their day when they told you and reported that they did? Because you can see basically when they logged on their computer. When do they end their day? And how much idle time took place throughout this work day? At this point, this person, if their work day was, you know, three to, um, say, you know, 11.30, and this was exactly their work day, that means that they this person had 15 minutes of idle time. So I might want to know, well, if their actual work day was 2 to, say, 12, and that's 10 hours, um, well, in that case, there is, I think this actually ends at um, 45 hours, so there's 15 minutes here. There is an hour here, so an hour and 15 minutes plus the 15 minutes. So that's an hour and a half of idle time, which is, if um, my math is right, of course, 90 minutes of total idle time. So being able to get a report on that could be useful. The day before, how much total idle time did each of my people have? Well, we have a report built for that now that you can have sent to you, again, on an automated basis um, to have an idea of what that report looks like. It's basically just like this. An Excel spreadsheet, it ranks people um, you know, top down how much idle time took place. Um, you can obviously sort this list if you wanted to. Um, but, you know, all of your users, here's the date, how much idle time. Maybe I want to know why this person has so much idle time yesterday. Does it mean that she wasn't working? Well, it's unclear. You'd have to look into it to better, get a better idea of what she did during that time. Was there a reason why she was much more idle than, than anybody else? I would imagine if somebody's job is heavily driven by computer, that might be a concern. 
Um, so to, to build that report, come back up to Dashboard, Reports. You're going to add a report, custom report. Um, and this last option, as you can see here, is an idle time report. You name it. Click Next. You're basically going to choose the work day that uh, of the people that you're looking at. So maybe your group, this group is a night shift group, and they don't work a nine to five; they work a twelve, you know, to eight or something like that. So what's nice is you don't have to choose all twenty four hours. I mean, obviously, you could do twenty four hours, and then technically everybody would be kind of held to the same standard. That's one way to do it. Or um, you can actually specify when it is their actual work day and have it be much more specific. Uh, but either way would work. So then you're choosing which days you're looking at. And again, this is automated, so this is going to come to you, um, you know, on a daily basis. Uh, so maybe they just work Monday through Friday. I want it to cover maybe everybody except my last two groups. I want it to come to me daily. Um, it's an Excel spreadsheet, and you add your email address, click Add, Next, Finish, you're all set. And then you'll get that report. And again, it's just allowing you to see kind of, hey, when are people at their computer? When are they doing something? Um, you know, if you need to look in further to find out, well, what were they doing there during that time, I would build a different report that maybe shows general user overview. You know, what did they do start to finish for a given day? Or, you know, I want to see all websites visited by all my people. And I can get a pretty quick idea of who's wasting time on the, on the internet, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the value behind that report. The last piece is a, a new interface that we've built, and it's it's a web-based interface, just like this is, kind of our, our full uh, interface that we have here. The difference is that this web's, uh, website or, or interface is mobile-friendly, so you can go to this website on your iPhone or Android and pull it up and be able to see kind of, hey, where are my people spending time? So if you're on the fly and you want to be able to kind of quickly see you know, websites visited or emails sent out, you'd be able to do that. And instead of Sonar Central, it is at login.interguardsoftware.com. It will list all of your devices that you have active um, or installed, and you can click on the device and then quickly see all of the different data points here. Uh, again, if you have Enterprise, here are the extra uh, data points you have available. Um, so yeah, if there were new data points added to any of these features, since the last time you logged in, there would be one of those little notification bubbles, just like you see up here. Uh, and it would basically show you how many new uh, data points exist in that feature set. So if somebody sent eight new emails since last you checked, there would be a little notification bubble with the number eight, so you'd know, hey, I need to check this. I haven't seen these eight latest emails that were sent out. I need to look at them and make sure everything's you know above water kind of thing. So same idea though, you click on the data point and if there were data in here, it would show it uh, and list it top down. Um, this is a test drive account, so I'm not sure. Actually our test drive account, I don't think the data is populated in here. The one thing to note for this web-based interface is that this is a newer space that we built on the corporate side. It's, it's, it's something that's been adopted already on our, our home monitoring software side um, pretty quickly and, and is becoming pretty popular fast. Um, we are still building out a lot of the, the basic functionality and the ability to build reports and, and create different settings in here. So this will only become more robust as time goes on. In the meantime, obviously, you still have the full regular interface that I would still suggest using. Um, but, but know that ultimately, you can at least get basic data from your people if you had to log in from your phone, if you're traveling or you're on the road or in between branches or whatever it might be. So yeah, so that's uh, that is kind of the bulk of what we were going to cover today. Um, again, feel free to type in any questions. I, do, I see we do have a couple in here, so I will answer them. Um, first one asks. Um, let me just see what this says here. Do you need to have enterprise to do user behavior reporting? So that's a great question. Um, User behavior reporting, you do not have to have enterprise for. So what I showed you, everybody would have access to with a regular employee monitoring license. There's an 
added step or a feature that you do have available with enterprise in relation to behavior reporting or, or notifications. So if you have enterprise, you can also go back to notifications. Sorry, go under settings, notifications. And you're going to add a new notification. And the way I showed you before is a report, right? So it's showing you kind of your total numbers of how many keystrokes or how many web mails were sent or how many websites are visited or how many blocked websites or how many USB act actions, any of those things, it's telling you how many times they happened. You can, if you have enterprise, as you can see here, you can even set it up so that if somebody doesn't meet a certain level of a given feature, such as number of emails sent, number of websites visited, maybe it's how many websites are visited, if they visited more than X number of websites or they typed less than X number of keystrokes in a given day, it can notify you the next day. So it's allowing you to take it one step further of saying, hey, this happened with this person. Don't even, you don't even have to look at the, the reporting of everyone. You can just know that this one person didn't, you know, go to, um, didn't use this many programs or went to this many websites, which is more than your threshold. So it's allowing you, again, to get another layer of protection and, and drawing out problems that might exist and allows you to kind of look into it deeper uh, or closer uh, with the software. So uh, to build that user behavior frequency notification, name it. So let's call it a um, behavioral notification. And basically you're creating like rules, right? So you're going to add a new setting or, or rule here. And you're either doing more or less than a certain number. And you get to choose all of these things, which is really the coolest part. Um, maybe blocked websites. This could be a great one. So more than how about two blocked websites per day. And I want more settings. So I'm going to add a new setting. Um, I want to know, I obviously have enterprise because I'm doing notifications. I want to know when any USB file tracking events happened more than zero. Um, I want to know, uh, as I mentioned with Enterprise, there's also a logon event uh, kind of ticker or it shows you every logon event over time. I want to know when there's an off hours login event. Basically that is off a nine to five base day. More than zero off hours login. Um, I want to know if somebody goes to less than five websites per day. Maybe their job is to go to websites. And this would show that somebody is not getting their job done. Anyway, create the settings, click next. It's a daily notification. It'll look back at the day before. Choose who it's covering. This one I want it to cover everybody. Add your email address, finish, and you're all set. Uh, cool. So uh, let me just see what we have do have a uh, Another question here, can this software work with an internet Wi-Fi server? Uh, so the answer is um, definitely yes. Um, I'm not sure in what sense you're referring to. What I will say is that it doesn't matter if the person is working at, at home uh, on a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot or on their home Wi-Fi or at, uh, at the company network. It's always going to be recording information and, and kind of seeing um, what people are doing. There's no way to work around it. The software is always up and running and the, 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 the capturing of information or the recording of data is happening at the actual endpoint. So there is no way for people to, to bypass that, which is really great and kind of the best part of the software is that you're fully covered no matter what. Um, so uh, I hope that answers your question, but just to answer your question one step further, if you're, actually, if you're asking about a physical server, can you monitor a server? The answer is yes. You can put the software on a server as well, monitor basic activity that's happening on the actual physical server as well. So I hope that answers your question. Um, there's another question that says, I heard there's numerous, is numerous issues working with endpoint protection or antivirus softwares. How is this resolved? So yeah, that's a great question too. Every single time you install the software, um, you will have to set up an antivirus exclusion so that the antivirus program does not interfere or quarantine the software. Uh, we are compatible with, I would say, 98% of all antivirus programs. The only one that we are not 
uh, compatible with is Bitdefender, and that's because their exclusion process is completely different than literally every other antivirus program. So as long as you set up the uh, software initially with an antivirus exclusion that's, that's specific to whatever you're running, um, when you initially get it installed, it'll install correctly, it won't quarantine it, and you'll be good to go. You'll be able to log in at any time, see data, it'll be checking in constantly. Um, that's really all it takes. Uh, if you're having problems with that, where it's kind of, for some reason, for some reason quarantining the software or knocking it off, um, I would say reach out to myself and I'll find out who your direct account manager is if it's not myself already um, and get you connected with support right away to have somebody connect with you, find out why that's happening, make sure the exclusion's put in there correctly, uh, possibly reinstall if that's what's needed and then going forward it should be uh, not a problem at all. Uh, but yeah, that is something that initially is so something that does need to be um, dealt with for sure. So that's pretty much it. I think uh, I didn't see any more questions. I, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to walk through it with us, hopefully, or with me. I, I hope um, people got a little bit more insight into what's available and you'll continue to kind of get more out of the, the licenses that you have. I want to give you guys my contact info, so if you have any follow-up questions that's specific to your account or anything that we talked about today, absolutely give me a call or shoot me an email. I'm happy to help out. Uh, so my name is Bill Evans. My direct phone number is 203 307-2941 and you can email me at B for my first name Bill and then my last name Evans E-V-A-N-S at awarenesstech.com um, certainly if you guys want those alert word lists as well just shoot me an email and say hey Bill can you send them over I will and they are very easy to, to import as you guys saw but let me know if you guys need help with anything whether it's support or account related and I'm uh, happy to help out Thanks, guys. Hope you have a great day, and I'm uh, looking forward to talking to everybody soon.